Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new video. So this video was actually requested by a lot of you and was asking to voice my opinion on the whole recent news uh, of what Cobb kind of just released. And what they're doing is actually dropping their access tuner, uh, their flex fuel kind of mapping and their flex fuel kits. Uh, a pretty big blow to the tuning community. Um, so what I wanted to do was kind of voice my opinion on the whole entire matter and kind of go over what I think the aftermarket tuning world holds um, and also some options that I think are going to be readily available uh, fairly soon. So let's head back to the garage, talk about everything that's going on, uh, and hopefully I can provide some insight for you guys. All right, guys, so we are back in the garage. I'm doing a little bit different style just because we've been in the garage often lately and uh, we've been staring at the car, so I figured I would get in front of the camera kind of go over what was just released by Cobb. Now, there has been a lot of information kind of strewing about. People are yelling at Cobb, going to their Instagram page and saying all this mean stuff. The first thing that I kind of want to start off by saying is that Cobb uh, is under extreme pressure. I don't think a lot of people realize this. Uh, with the EPA cracking down on, you know, just everything emission related and everything that's going on, they were under extreme pressure just to get by, just to, you know, continue on with their business and keep them profitable and keeps everybody that works for Cobb in business. Nobody wants to lose their job or get laid off or anything like that. So Cobb as a business is doing everything in their power uh, to keep their business afloat and doing uh, what they need to do to keep uh, everything going smoothly. And unfortunately on the consumer side, it's going to affect uh, some of you. Not everybody. There's a ton of people out there that use access ports. I saw so many comments of people reaching out to Cobb saying, I want a refund for my access port there's a lot of misconstrued information going out there. So what I'm going to do in this video is try to explain it in layman's terms. Just keep it simple. Don't get too uh, crazy with it. And then I'm going to try to give you some other options that are going to be available probably in the near future. Um, that could be actually be a little bit better than Cobb. If you haven't been following along or see kind of what they released is they actually removed their access tuner for tuners. So any tuner out there can go into their program and actually work with their system to be able to tune certain cars. And what Cobb actually did is they're actually removing that programming from the access port. Um, now, don't get this misconstrued again. This is honestly only really affecting people that are, are flex, um, people that are E85, that kind of stuff. Uh, the main reason for that is because it's emission related. Anything that would trigger a check engine light, like going catless, TGV deletes, uh, flex fuel, anything like that that would honestly affect emissions, that is where people are gonna see the most change. Um, now, the unfortunate part about it is the way that Cobb did it. I'm not very happy about it. You know, for me, for me personally, I'm not on flex. I don't have a flex kit, so it doesn't really affect me whatsoever. Uh, but I feel for the tuning companies, I feel for the people that are in the middle of their engine builds that actually went ahead and purchased an access port as well as a Cobb Flex Fuel Kit, uh, TGV deletes, all that kind of stuff that they're getting ready to build their cars and then Cobb dropped this bomb. And the reason why it's so heart-wrenching is because um, you know these people were expecting a certain product to be able to get their cars running and do a certain thing um, and they can't do it anymore. Uh, and also for tuning companies, I saw, I'm not going to name specific companies, but I saw somebody, a pretty, pretty well-known tuner in the um, Subaru community that actually was literally saying that their income was going to be cut in half. Um, and that's, that's, you know, that hurt to just to read that. I don't even know the person. I never been tuned by them or anything like that. Um, and just to see something like that, it's, it's pretty upsetting. Um, and the way that Cobb did it was just like how Subaru did it when they announced they're not doing the STI. It was just one of those things. One day it was fine, the next day they released this crazy information and that was it. It was just super quick. It was just a, a little excerpt a article on their blog um, and then that's it. So I do want to say if you're using an access port to run, uh, you know, when I'm kind of running the stage three and all the modifications I'm running currently, you're not going to have any problems. The access port is still a fantastic tool uh, that anybody can use. You can still purchase, you can still use it to monitor your car, you can still use it to tune your car. It's just those specific things um, that are emission related that you're not going to be able to do through an access port. You know, again, I saw so many people just getting so upset at Cobb uh, and I felt for them. You know, they're just doing what they can to stay afloat. They're a huge company uh, in the aftermarket world and the EPA is after them. It's as simple as that. It really is sad to see somebody with such a reputation get taken down like that and just have to do certain things to get by. And that's just what it is in the current environment and how it is today. You know, people need to make sacrifices uh, and that is what they had to do. Another thing to keep in mind as well is that tuners are still gonna be able to tune you for E85. It's not like it's the end of the world and they're not gonna be able to do it anymore. 
Um, the only difference is that they're going to have to make two separate maps or three or depending on how many different settings you're going to have. So if you want to get tuned for E85, you're going to get an E85 map. If you want to get tuned for 93, you get a 93 map. The beauty of flex mapping or flex tuning, it allowed the consumer to be able to put E85, 93, 91, whatever into their car and it would just work into the system and kind of figure it out on its own. Uh, but now if you wanted to run E85, you'd have to load the E85 map vice versa, 93. So it's not like you're not gonna be able to get E85 anymore or anything like that. Tuning companies are just going to find another way to be able to do it, which I guarantee you they're gonna find a new way to get it done. Um, you know, they're, they're obviously knowledgeable enough to be able to work on these cars and kind of manipulate things to get them uh, working properly. So um, there's definitely gonna be other solutions out there. So don't think that E85 is no more and we're not gonna be able to do it. Um, they're just gonna have to go about it a different way. But the only difference as well in terms of E85 or anything like that is they're not gonna be able to turn off the check engine light. Um, so that may affect you in terms of, you know, if you're a mission state or something like that and you go and get your car inspected, which you guys just know I just did, you may run into some issues with that. Uh, but again, tuners and aftermarket companies are very, very resourceful. They've done it in the past, they'll be able to do it again. So they'll be able to find a way to get through that, kind of work their way back to where we are or where we were uh, prior to Cobb removing this this kind of programming for, for them. So it's not the end of the world. I think people should relax a little bit, get their details right, and just don't start you know screaming at Cobb saying they're the worst company in the world. Um, they brought us some amazing stuff over the years. They're probably one of the most reputable companies out there. I purchased so many stuff from them in the past, not with just with this car, but others as well. And I've never had a bad product from Cobb. So I think people just need to take a chill pill, get their information, you know, make sure you're reading the right information and get a better understanding of it. Um, and then kind of move forward from there. So initially when I first kind of heard this information, my first thought process was how is Cobb gonna redeem themselves? Meaning the people that bought access ports or flex fuel kits or anything like that from them uh, that just recently bought them, you know, what are they going to do about that? Because simply those things are useless to them. They can't do anything with it. Uh, and they paid, you know, good money to get those pieces of equipment and now they can't use them for their build. Uh, and they're kind of SOL. These people are going to be out, you know, $1,500 or so for all those parts that they just got from Cobb to run their cars and, and go to flex and all that stuff. Um, you know, what are they going to do? Uh, and actually recently, right before I started recording this video, I actually saw some things through the grapevine that actually Cobb uh, may be doing some type of refund, you know, within the last year or something like that. Don't hold me to that. I don't know if it's 100% true, uh, but I kind of heard through the grapevine that they're going to start maybe uh, refunding some people. Um, you know, they're going to have some type of grace period, what have you, uh, to get those people's money back uh, for the purchases that they just made. Uh, which is good on Cobb. I really do think that is the right move to do in this situation. Obviously, it's unfortunate to them because that is going to be a huge hit for them um, in terms of the overall income and just as a business. But sometimes you got to do things to kind of keep businesses afloat and to keep your customers um, you know, coming back. And I honestly think that is something that they should do. Now, for me, I wasn't going to say anything yet, uh, but I was actually working because um, you guys know that I'm going to external wastegate. I'm going to my shop and everything. We're getting all that done. Um, and I was actually going to do a Cobb 20G as well as a Cobb front mount. So that was kind of not really a secret, but it was something that I was going to do. Um, and then after this news, it started making me scratch my head. Like, do I really want to support this brand anymore? I have a ton of Cobb parts on my car. I've been a huge Cobb fanboy over the years. Um, so I really started thinking if I really wanted to continue to support that brand. Um, you know, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. I simply just like their products um, and they've always had a great reputation. And I've always had great experiences with them. Um, so this this kind of thing threw me for a loop and it made me start scratching my head You know if I should really purchase their parts and continue uh, To run uh, their brand, but after a day or so and kind of reading up on it a little bit more um, I realized that I was jumping the gun as well just because it was so out of the blue And there really wasn't that much information out there just that access ports were no longer being sold and you can't Buy them you're not gonna be able to tune your cars anymore or anything like that um, It was very vague just like everybody else uh, but now that I got more information, I'm a little bit more understanding, um, it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I can't blame Cobb for it. They, they're just doing what they have to do. I really don't think I'm going to change my mind until, you know, what I'm doing with this car. I still think I'm going to go with the Cobb route. Um, but still, it's a shame. It's really, really sad to see what's happening in this environment so quickly. I mean, we just got some breaking terrible news with the STI for 2022. Not happening. Now Cobb, one of the biggest brands in the tuning company, just honestly released this huge bomb to everybody, especially the Subaru community, 
uh, where Cobb is very, very prevalent. Uh, it's just it's just a weird year, and it really is just sad to see people controlling, uh, you know, our hobbies, things that we love to do, things that we love to do on the side. For some people, obviously, their business and their their means of income. Um, it's just sad that people can control that so quickly, literally just by a letter, just saying, hey, nope, it's not happening anymore, and all these businesses and people are kind of turned upside down, kind of left scratching their heads. So before we wrap up this video, I just wanted to go over some solutions um, that people may be looking into. Uh, right now, it's not, you know, we're still in that limbo of what the heck are we going to do. The people that are building their cars are kind of, you know, again, left in the limbo. They're, they're kind of questioning what they should do, but there's other options out there. And one thing to note is before Cobb even became a company, you know, people were tuning cars. People were doing things to cars before them. <laughs> um, so we can easily continue to do stuff after them and find ways to get around it. Um, there's companies like Haltech or Motec um, that are open source that people can move to. I guarantee you something like that is going to come out pretty quickly. One of those companies or a new company is going to come out some, with something very, very shortly. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, I'm sure people are scrambling just to get something going. Right now there's an open book. Um, you know, people are looking for solutions. Uh, so a company I'm sure is going to come out with something that probably might be even a little bit better than Cobb. You know, for me, I'm not into the open source or anything like that. I don't need to for where I am currently or where I plan to go with this car. Obviously, if something comes out in the future that's better, uh, we can obviously explore that option. But for right now, for me, an access port is staying. I'm staying with Cobb and all that. Um, nothing is changing on my end. But I do feel for those companies. I do feel for Cobb. I do feel for the people building their motors and kind of, you know, stuck in a, in a weird situation of what to do. Uh, but there is going to be other solutions. You know, you just got to hang tight a little bit. People need to relax, kind of get the information out there. And I'm sure a lot of people are making these videos right now and kind of releasing them and kind of going over all the information so people get a better understanding. So that is my opinion and that is kind of the update that I want to inform you guys on. A lot of people were asking, you know, what I thought about the whole situation to explain it a little bit more. And that is pretty much the gist of it. Um, now, if you guys want to go check out a more detailed video, my buddy Tanner uh, Smedia, you guys know him. He released a really, really detailed video yesterday, actually. He's a little bit more knowledgeable in the open source aspect of it since he's going through it with his current STI. Um, but honestly, I would go check that video out if you want a little bit more detailed information. But for this video, I just kind of wanted to give you guys the gist of it, make you uh, understand it a little bit better. And not that everybody that has an access port is going to be affected by it. Um, and just kind of give you a little bit more understanding about my take on it, where I stand with my car, where I stand with Cobb, um, that kind of situation. So I hope this helped. I really hope that uh, it gave you a little bit more clarity as to what's going on. It's a really unfortunate situation, and I really do hope somebody kind of uh, picks up the slack and is able to help uh, all these people kind of left uh, out in the open and just kind of curious about what's going to happen next with their cars or their STIs or what have you. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions at all, ask them in the comments below. I'll be sure to do my best to answer as best as I possibly can. But yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed it. In the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.